Kajal. <laughs> Good morning, Shepherd. Uh, welcome to Entrepreneurship Couch. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Mm. Right here on this platform, we try to make sure that we inspire and encourage a lot more entrepreneurs to follow your, your own journey as well as making sure that they are motivated, those that may have been thinking of closing their businesses. Okay. Mm. Rachel, may you start by sharing with us how did your entrepreneurship journey start? Okay. Uh, after my O levels, I was knitting and sewing. That is a skill I was taught by my mother. And then <laughs> I did that part time while I was working full time in an office here in Harare. And then while I was sewing, I started making earrings for my clients just to complement the outfits. And then gradually the earrings started uh, growing more than the outfits. So it just uh, it organically grew, making the earrings one each day, more and more and more, took more of my attention. And then I just focused full time on making jewelry. And here I am today. Mm. Rachel, a lot of a lot of people your age are still throwing CVs around looking for a job. Why are you not looking for a job instead? Well, me, I believe in what I'm doing. I love what I'm doing. And I believe I can do more with the business than as an employee. And with the business that I'm doing, you get to impact the community and people from a background such as myself to believe and to know more about themselves. So that's why I'm not looking for a job. Instead, I am creating jobs. Good, Rachel. Now, Rachel, we have had a lot of stories in terms of jewelry making. How is your particular type of jewelry making different from the rest? Okay, first of all, Shepard, my business, Silver Box Jewelry, we do all our jewelry by hand. So that's number one handcrafted things is almost like a dying art in this modern world so first of all everything we do everything you see and everything we sell is made by hands one and two we use real stones real pearls real leather real beads everything we do not use imitation so i like to think that my business is the happy balance between the fine jewelers who use diamonds tanzanite you know those stones that are so expensive and then there's the bottom end where there's must produce things like imitation stuff. So us, I see silver box as us were in between there. So we give you real stuff. We give you handmade stuff and you don't have to break the bank when you're buying from us. So you buy something that lasts, but there's something that's real as well. So that's where I see silver box as. Mm. Rachel, where is your market? Who are the people that buy from you? Shepard, in this, in this modern world, markets are, people are everywhere. And especially if you are online. So it means you can reach anyone anywhere. We do not like to confine or to say our customers are just in Harare or they are just in South Africa. We are available, accessible to everyone and anyone. Like our tagline says, uh, we make beautiful jewelry for everyone who loves real things. So we like to to look at everyone or anyone, anywhere in the world. So I would say that my clients are wherever they, wherever in the world. They're mm. not just one place or one country, yeah. Rachel, we cannot talk of entrepreneurship without talking about employment creation as well as empowerment. How does your company speak to these two issues? Okay, uh, with empowerment, what we do when I employ someone to work with me in the business, I teach them a skill. Jewelry making is a skill in itself. And this is something that empowers somebody to, to make an income stream for themselves. So everyone who works for me, whether they stay for 10 years or 10 months, already they have a skill that they can take somewhere and teach another person or create income for themselves. And the next thing was what... Uh, what was your next question, sir? Empowerment. Empower. That's the empowerment when we train you. So you're empowered with the skill, an income generating skill. And then also, like I believe you touch one to touch the next person. So once I teach person A, 
person A teaches person B, person B teaches person C, and, and so on and so on. So at the end of the day, we have a lot of women out there who have the skill on how to make jewelry and they are able, they're in a position to teach the next person. So all of us now, the community now, we're able to help ourselves, we're able to create income for ourselves. And that is very important to me, considering the background where I came from. I, I wanted to do jewelry design, but I had no idea where to start, first of all. The information was a bit limited, one. And two, in Harare, the courses, it's, it was scarce at my time when I was coming up. And then uh, when you do find the course that you need to do, um, the biggest challenge is that it's so expensive. It's hard to be able to put the resources together to afford that course. So the next thing, the next best thing you think, I have to be self-taught. And then to look for those people that know how to make jewelry, that is another challenge because information about our industry in my community is not so widespread. So for me, that is how I'm creating empowerment here in my community. And as for employment, when uh, I have two shops, one in Harare and one in Cape Town. So with every shop, I employ two girls. So those two girls, uh, I have four. And then in season, uh, for us season, because we're a gift, uh, we're kind of like a Greek gifting product. So our high season is September to December and January there. So we have markets, lots of markets to attend. So with these four girls, then we need more people to attend the markets on our behalf. So employment at my capacity, I have, I have four people like full time, and then two more as casuals. So that's how I am creating employment. Mm. A lot of people that we have spoken to always complain or worry about the issue to do with seed capital. How did you overcome this challenge to do with seed capital when you started your business? Oh, Shepard, uh, money is a constant challenge, to be honest. And I don't know if I can say I've overcome it because you always need money. Because in my particular business, we buy the raw materials. So that needs money. So our biggest challenge as a small business is like when you're going to financial institutions and to banks, so they need collateral. They need uh, people who guarantee your loan. So which half the time you don't have those things. So it's a challenge to prove that I have a viable business that can work, but I don't have collateral and I don't have anyone to guarantee me because it's not so well understood. So what we have done, what I have done personally with my business is like whatever little money I make from sales, I plow it back into the business. So we always have capital to buy, to expand, to attend shows, to buy raw materials and to pay my workers some of the times. So plowing back, and angel investors. Sometimes you are lucky you get family or friends who are willing to sponsor you here and there. And then that's how we get by. But uh, this challenge has, has taught us to be very diligent in our finances so that we always look for two, three months down the line, not just like we've made money now, how can we spend it? So that's how we've overcome the financial challenges in my business. Mm. Right, Joe, we have talked about the financial challenges. What other challenges you have faced in your business besides challenges to do with finances? Okay, uh, just to take you a little bit back. First, just to start. Uh, when I was starting, I didn't know where to start, where to go. And then once I knew where the courses were, they were I couldn't afford them. So there's the thing. You have the passion and you, you know, you are determined to do it, but then you can't can't afford the course. So the next thing for me was to teach myself how to make this jewelry because I can't afford the course. So you, I taught myself to make that one. And then two, like it's a uh, jewelry is a luxury product, if I may say. So people buy to celebrate and to gift, you know, it's not like, it's not a basic necessity. So in my country, my, our economy, so there are many other bread and butter issues that take precedence of a jewelry. So our challenge was how do we now make people pay attention to us, buy our product, 
you see so with this challenge we've uh we have had to be very proactive in marketing social media word of mouth uh using people like uh, can you wear my jewelry show to your other congregates at church or at work or your friends so it's made us become more proactive and thinking how can we make people aware or how can we create the desire in people to get our products even if they have all these other pressing challenges so that's how we become we've overcome that the other challenge uh because we have a shop in harare and in cape town so as you can imagine opening up a business in a foreign land has its own challenges there's the language barriers there's a bureaucracy there's the labor laws everything is different from where you come from so uh we have had to integrate ourselves into the community and then work with the community that is there and then uh also uh needs jewelry in zambia in harare or in cape town it's different you find that people uh, ladies in zambia prefer a particular set of colors or design Zimbabwe has got its own preferences and then you get to Cape Town they've got their own preferences and in each country they each have their own tourist so they also bring their own preferences so we've had the challenge the good challenge of having to anticipate and uh, be proactive in our designs to say okay this uh, for example brown is very popular in Zimbabwe but in Cape Town no and then orange is very popular in zimbabwe but in in uh in zambia we cannot sell orange as well as the stones so people of different areas they've got attachments to colors to stones and to their own beliefs and everything so we've had to anticipate in each market that we go to like okay when we're going to sell in cape town what's the what's what's our best foot forward if we're going to sell in joburg what's our best foot forward so it's exciting in itself in the challenge of like okay we want to go there so how do how do we effectively cater to the people in that in that place mm. Rachel, a lot of people we have interacted with those that are in business they've said whilst running a business comes with its own challenges but there are also challenges that comes with uh, not having proper supporting structures in your case have you had any challenges in terms of supporting structures oh yes when i started uh i was of the mind that i can do this on my own i can do i know what i'm doing i know where i'm going and i don't need anybody's help but then that was wrong because down the road i found like when you face challenges as with life you need somebody to who's been there or who's walked a similar path than where you want to go so i would say that uh, i i think uh support emotional support from family from friends and from well wishes it's it's invaluable because sometimes just a word of encouragement just don't give up or no why don't you try a b c d you know it's very it, it's very i found it very helpful i have a business mentor myself she's not in the same industry but the advice that she gives me time and time again i found that i've been able to apply it into my own business into my own systems and it's worked so i would say that support 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 because uh as with jewelry not many people are doing it here in zimbabwe especially like african ladies so you don't sometimes you don't know who can relate to the issue that you're facing you know so when you once you get to someone who's been there so it it, it it gives you that hope that it can be done you can do it you just need to try again or try this path so support for me and for everyone out there who wants to do business you need support hmm hmm where to now uh the next 5 to 10 years what's your vision well i see silver box growing like now we are in two countries ideally we want to be international not necessarily brick and mortar in each and every country no now we have the advantage of having uh, online so we sell online so i would like to push us to, to to increase our online sales our online community engagements with the clients and awareness you know and then we also do beading lessons and uh teaching people how to make that so this is a dream of mine that if i can like all the other girls and women 
that come from my, my typical background or even different, if they want to pursue jewelry design as a career option that I can be able to help. So in 10 years, I would like to have a proper set up facility whereby we train the young ones, the vulnerable ones, the women, or whoever has a passion for jewelry design. Whether you want, you are trying it out or you want to, or you know, you want to in, increase your skills set. So I want to be able to provide a solution, you know, to those people and to, to make it so, to make it accessible to everyone. That if you want to pursue this career, you know, like uh, nursing and teaching, ev almost everyone knows how you can become a nurse or a teacher. But then how do you become a jewelry designer? Staying in Budiriro and Glenview in Harare, you know? So I want to make it easy. If you have that desire or if you have that curiosity, then you can come to us, then we can help you to explore that. And then you can decide if this is a path for you or not. Mm. Signs of the times are ratio COVID-19, the pandemic has actually caused an upset in terms of how companies have been running. How has this affected your business? Well, Shepard, there's negatives and positives to everything. So I'll start with the negatives. First of all, uh, both my shops have had to close, like total shutdown. So that in itself, zero sales, zero uh, money income coming in, and orders that we had in the pipeline while the lock before the lockdowns all have been cancelled, suspended, and what have you. So this has been very negative because my girls, I've had to tell my girls to go home and I, not, I do not have the, the, the answers to tell them when can we come back, when can we open up again. As with everyone, we don't know. So, and the third thing is that production. We've had to shut down our production down to one person. At our capacity, remember I said we have four people making and selling. So now it's come down to one, to me. So that, those have been the negative effects. But the positives, we like to look up because we have to press on. We have to keep on. We've been uh, kind of like forced to look and question ourselves. How can we keep this going? Or how can we grow this? Even if all our hands are tied behind our backs, what can we do? So now what we've done is like we've increased our online engagements, our online advertising, marketing, and also word of mouth you tell one person please tell the next person please show the next person so now our marketing is more organic we take from one person to the next and to the next and also online how you advertise because before we just post nice pair of earrings or nice necklace but then now you have to be, go into detail and then entice the customer to want to buy that irrespective of what's going on uh, to show the customer your product and to talk more about what your product is. And also it's taught us that uh, being in business is not just selling, selling, selling to people. You have to create a relationship with the people that you're trying to sell to. So now we also talk more about the background, what we do and how we do. And if you buy our things, what does it mean? How does it last? How do you take care of it? So it's also, also opened up our eyes to see that, no, there's another way you can communicate with your audience, which has been a positive for us. And the last positive has been, uh, we teach people how to bead, but uh, before we didn't push it as much, like we are beading, you can teach your beading classes. So because now everyone is on lockdown, most parents, most women, most girls are looking for something to do. And we do have access to supply the tools, the beads and the materials you need if you're making jewelry. So now we've had, um, we've also started marketing our tools and we've also started marketing our beads with even more impact than before. So that's been the positive for us here. And the last positive is um, all this time on lockdown, it's given me time to think, like to strategize, like coming from here, how do we bounce back? How do we get business? Where can we grow? Where were we going wrong and where can we improve? So it's given, yeah, I've, uh, I'm appreciative of the time to clearly think without distractions, without any, you know, day-to-day -day routines that we used to do. So this time, I would like to think I've used it wisely 
to re-strategize. And so that when the lockdowns end, when we come back, we have even got more punch, better products, better communication and engagements for our clients. Mm. We have got a lot of uh, people that are watching this show. I would like to afford you an opportunity to talk to them, inspire them, give them motivation, encourage them. What are your last words? Okay. Uh, to the entrepreneurs out there, especially women, because I can relate. Uh, when, you, when you have a passion for something, don't give up. Even if it's not readily or easily accessible, I think do your research, do your homework, find out, network, ask people who are in the field or people who know people who are in the field so that you have the full information. When you go into a certain business, uh, you go there with knowledge. Don't just go blindly, one. And two, don't go for a business that will make you money. You know, don't chase money. More chase your passion than money. And then when you chase your passion, then money will follow. I know in my country, there's, there's a pressing need to make money, to find money. So I would say that find your passion and money will find you. And two, get support, like I said. For me, support has been very valuable. And it's been the gap sometimes between giving up and re-energizing or finding new markets. So I'll say get support, get mentors, talk to people, don't give up. And three, mistakes are a part of life. You will make a mistake. You will make a bad decision. That is okay. That is life. I've made some bad decisions and they've set me back. But then uh, the trick is... Whenever you make a mistake, I always ask myself, what did I learn from this? One. And two, how can, what can I do now? How can I grow? I've made this mistake. It has happened. But moving forward, what can I do? Because every mistake is a lesson. So don't take it too hard. Just keep pressing forward. Mm. Rachel, thank you very much for affording us this time to come and talk to us. I hope somebody somewhere has been inspired. We hope to talk to you again sometime maybe when we are assessing how uh, your business has continued to grow. Thank you very much once again for your time. Thank you, Shepard. To, to our viewers across the globe. That has been Rachel Mahakata, the MD for Silverbox Jewelry. She has been doing very well when it comes to running a business. Please continue to watch our shows and continue to subscribe as we bring you more entrepreneurs who have been doing this and you are going to benefit from them. Thank you very much again, Rachel. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye.